Do you know where the old dip dipstick is? Where? Do you know where? <laughs> <laughs> I like my answers. <laughs> So it's a 52, it's an Orin, or Orin, and it has a 779, I think? 779 cubic inch straight six engine made by Waukesha, multi-fill gas or gasoline. And it's pretty complete. There's some stuff that's taken apart on it. It's not too bad. I kind of looked it over a little bit. There's definitely a lot of stuff that's taken apart. The gauges are taken apart. I need to be careful because it has the original cloth wiring. I don't want to burn anything up. I need to figure out what all this stuff does. Oh, see this is the switch for the, for the mag because it has dual spark as a distributor and it also has a mag. It's a five speed. I don't see any keys. transmission locked up so it's probably not gonna drive but it'll we can try to get it running I think I'm just gonna bypass everything because I don't want to catch anything on fire which would kind of be ironic if I caught a fire truck on fire so there's not a oil dipstick but there's this thing you pop this off and it says on the side oil level so I'm assuming that there's no oil in it there's a bunch of sludge I'm gonna go ahead and put a gallon in there. Make sure the engine will spin all the way over, or not all the way over, but just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's not locked up. So, I'm gonna pull each one of these plugs. I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 down there. And I also want to look in there and see if there I see any water. The hood was left off of it for about five years. Um, so likelihood of there being water is pretty high. So something has definitely been living in the carburetor. If you look down in there, yuck. Look at that. What does that look like? Rat's nest, maybe? Another thing too is the throttle Carburetor's completely locked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drench it down with WD-40. And spark plug holes. We get all the spark plugs drenched. So I got the first spark plug out. It's not bad. It's not what I was expecting. Because the engine was uncovered, I was expecting it to, ha to be really rusty. So this is actually a really good sign um, that we're not seeing any rust. I think it's just anti-seize. This plug came out super duper easy. Looks like somebody was definitely fooling with it. So they put anises on the plug. Good sign, good sign. I'm gonna look down in the cylinder and see if I see any water. I'm not thinking I will though. Just because of how clean that plug is, there's no rust on it. So I'm actually gonna fill the cylinders up with WD-40 and PB Blaster. I didn't, I didn't bring a extension long enough. What I did was I just took my vice grips and put it on my Craftsman set. Luckily, somebody put anises on these plugs, so it's super easy to get off. And then it basically just pops right off. See, look, that one, a little bit of WD-40, boom, good to go. This is the last, last plug. And then we can start messing with the carburetor. These are just the precautions I'm gonna take before starting this engine, because I don't wanna suck anything up into the engine. And if the engine is full of water, well, we don't wanna hydro lock it. So it's better just to take the plugs out, fill it up with PB Blaster and, and WD-40, 
and then once we get the motor to turn over it, all that stuff will like junk will blow out man this thing is freaking huge it's crazy hi ho hi ho it's off the carburetor goes look how massive this carburetor is i mean isn't that insane it's crazy like, this is my hand this is a one barrel carburetor on a massive this engine is probably almost as tall as i am i mean i'm like seven foot two so all right last bolt oh wait i need to do undo this fuel line too All right, make your bets now. What's it gonna look like? Whoa! Um, okay, it is very, very, very good that the throttle is locked up. I'm about to show you why. Holy shnikes. Look at that. That's why you check the carburetor. That's why you wait to open the throttle up. Because if I would have, if this, if this would have been free enough, I wiggled it a little bit, but if it would have been free, all that junk, would have fell straight that is a certified texas dirt dauber nest so a leaf blower blows right but the air has to come from somewhere it comes from right here so this is my idea take the suction side of the leaf blower stick it on there maybe we can suck all that stuff out let's see what happens No way, dude. Check this out. Oh, old Makita's not just a leaf blower, but it's a, a sucker, too. Whee! This is moving, but this throttle plate isn't moving. So that's going to need some work. Since I got it all clean, let me see if I can get the throttle plate, plate to loosen up. And I still got some more junk I need to clean out. On here. Let me get to work and clean. Oh yeah, that tastes good. That tastes real good. Yeah? Yo, yo, what's up, man? What's going on? I'm in the middle of a field working on a fire truck. This is really simple because it looks it looks a lot more intimidating than it really is. Because this down here, if y'all can see that float, what I'll do is I'll blow into it and see. Yep. It's clear. All right. Dude, the float works. Check this out. I can't get any air through. Now, you know, upside down would be the float is all the way up. So it's blocking the fuel off. If I turn it upside down, I can blow into it. So the float is actually good. I'm not going to take this apart. Walmart was all out of a carburetor cleaner. So I got some brake parts cleaner. I'm just gonna squirt some brake parts cleaner in there and leave it upside down for a little bit. Let's see if that does anything. I gotta have it upright so it'll it'll fill up with fuel. Learn all this shit. Just messing with stuff. This uh this carburetor was plumb full of dirt dobbers nests. So the needle and seat's good. This thing may this thing may idle. So I'll have to look it over and make sure I don't burn the truck down. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? Yeah. To burn a fire truck down. Man, that's crazy. Yes, sir. That was the owner. He came up and talked to me. He's a really, really nice guy. All right. I got this all free. I don't have a gasket, so we're just going to have to mm, hope it seals. But I got this all moving free. And the throttles butterfly in there is, is running, turning spinning whatever you want to call it go ahead and bolt this puppy on the fan is hitting the radiator support 
I need to figure out how to adjust these arms or maybe I can bend that up and then we can go ahead and put 12 bolts to our starter get the sucker to spin over a little bit blow all that WD-40 out and then we'll shoot the plugs back in so I'm just about ready to, to spin the motor over with the starter um, that PV blaster and WD-40 is really working good because this thing's moving over really easy now I think somebody was disassembling it and these bolts down here are loose so let me go ahead and stick those back in the hole that should do the trick that's got her all right now we're clear I do know that the steering is locked up the transmission is locked up too I can't it seems to be in neutral but I can't get it to go in any gears even whenever I push the clutch so once it gets moving and running and warmed up it might it might go into gear but oh there we go a little bit more turn what I'll do is I'll disconnect the power wire on the coil it's a weird looking coil it says Delco Remy on it and I'll run it straight to a battery and on the other side where the starter is I'll run a wire straight to the starter that way we'll have 12 volt on the coil, bolt straight to the star, and that way this thing will fire up and run. And if we want to kill it, we can just pull the wire off the ignition coil. Before I do that, I'm just going to run the wire to the starter so we can see if we can get it to spin over fast enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp my battery cables on there. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove this cable so it doesn't back feed into the truck and start a fire. I'm going to clamp somewhere and then I'll clamp my power on there get the, get the truck to spin over and I'll stand far back just in case it's stuck in gear or, or you know and I can touch it actually touch it to the battery that way it doesn't lunge forward and run me over or something here's a little tip whenever you take nuts and bolts off of stuff let's say you pull a alternator off or a cable and a starter go ahead and put the nut back on that way if you walk away and 20 years later the next guy he can the nuts on there for him and then all he has to do is just take the nut off stick the cable and tighten it back down it's not spinning over very fast um, but it, it is spinning over. So I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just put the spark plugs back in there. Hook up the spark plug wires. And then I'll run that power to the coil. We'll see if we can get it to pop off. Of course you want to make sure that they're gapped it right. Yep, looks gapped to me. And I'm going to hit them with some sandpaper too. So you'll notice this has two plugs per cylinder. And the way that it works is you have, you can see that right here, you have a distributor. Just your standard distributor with points that opens and close, sends a sparky spark to each cylinder. Then over here, notice right there, you have what's called a mag. You can turn that on and off inside the truck. So that is the secondary, and that will run, um, let's say you lose battery power, you jump the truck, you can turn the magneto on, and you can run the truck off of the magneto, get you to where you can get back to, uh, you know, get to your fire or get to, get back to the station. So you basically have two options. I'm gonna run it off of the distributor. The motor is turning really, really slow. So I wanna make sure, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up eating my battery up pretty fast. So I wanna make sure that turns that I'm getting, I got really, really good spark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the distributor cap off and I'm gonna clean the points with some sandpaper. That way I, I know I got good spark. Once I get those cleaned up, then I'll go ahead and run my power wire to my coil. And it's pretty corroded. You can see all that white build up. I'm gonna have to sand all that off, spray it out with some brake clean, and then this rotor comes off and I'll have to clean this with some sandpaper that makes contact with the cap then under here we should have points it's like Christmas let's see what happens oh that's yucky got some crispies 
points don't look that bad. These were replaced, um, some, I mean, at some point they were replaced because you can tell how shiny the base of the points are. But the contacts inside are just a little corroded. They actually look worn out. They look pretty, pretty thin. And like somebody had cleaned them a couple times. So what I'll do is I'll take some sandpaper, I'll file the points, get them shiny, sparkly, get all this dust out, clean this out. So here's your distributor. This shaft is driven by the motor. It spins and it has a however many cylinders you have, that's how many little spikes you have on it. But every time the motor turns over, this hits a high spot. What it does is it opens those points. You see it open and close? And that's what causes your spark, it causes an interruption. And then it goes and it arcs. So these two little contacts and clean those out it with some brake clean boom we should fire up and run hopefully and that should be good enough for the chicks we date now we can assemble our distributor I'm really really hoping that uh, these points cap and rotor are good are fine just being cleaned up because the likelihood of me finding parts for a 1952 Waukesha motor well I'd say that those are parts for these are probably far and few between I cleaned up that rotor too okay let's put some gas in it see if it fires up almost forgot to put my coil power wire because I'm gonna remove this wire I'm just gonna run 12 volts straight to, off of my battery all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. Got my coil wire straight to the coil. I'm gonna touch my jumpers to the starter, spray some fluid down it and see if it fires up. over a little bit I think I just need more fuel hook a fuel pump up to it all right so I got my fuel system rigged up just a one gallon gas can two gallon gas can and then a clicky clacky pump that's leaking for some reason all right let's try this again
that's what I'm doing wrong. I'm using the negative wire. I'm an idiot. So what I was doing was I was using the negative wire, the ground wire, for my starter and for my ignition coil so it would start up and once I would let go of the starter, it also would kill my ignition. So I'm an idiot. That concludes that adventure. Will it run? Yes, it will. You guys tell me what you think. You think it would be cool to see this old truck on the road? Or at least or at least driven around the yard. I think that'd be pretty cool. But I gotta get out of here because I don't have headlights on my car on my Plymouth. And I don't, I don't wanna get caught in in the dark. Pretty cool old truck. It wouldn't take much to to get it on the road, I don't think, because it has a regular, um, just manual hydraulic brakes. I mean, the master cylinder almost looks identical to the one on this wagon and any other car I've worked on. It's 50, so it's you know it's in the floor right there in this hole. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. After sitting for 25 years, we got it to run. So this is gonna conclude today's episode. This is not my truck. The owner's a really nice guy. And he's got another fire truck over there underneath that carport. I do know that the transmission is locked up. But you guys tell me what you think. If the video gets enough views and, and people wanna see the, see the old truck, I think it's pretty clean. I mean, the paint would probably clean up pretty good. The front is a little scratched up but anyways guys i'm gonna head home before it gets too dark all right y'all take care and uh, remember keep it dirty keep it rusty keep them alive